Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jamila Wilson. I am the program director for Peoria Corps, and we are so happy that you all have taken time out your day to celebrate these young people completing um, this wonderful accomplishment. So I prepared a few words. You guys all have a program in front of you. Um, I do want to acknowledge that this is also AmeriCorps week. Um, so our program, Peoria Corps, is a part of the national program. And I want to acknowledge Shelly, who's also an AmeriCorps member. She's with the American Red Cross. Um, but this week, we are celebrating all of the work that uh, young people, middle people, old people give back to uh, the country. So uh, AmeriCorps is the Domestic Peace Corps. It's the opportunity for citizens to um, uh, commit service to their communities. And our members have, uh, over the six months, committed 900 hours of service to the community. And so we're really excited about that and want to celebrate that. But I would like to just share a few uh, words, starting with the word resilience. We are in a time that challenges everything that we know and much uncertainty of what the next day brings. But what I do know to be true is that these individuals sitting here before you have demonstrated that they know how to manage challenges and obstacles and that those challenges and obstacles make them stronger. In fact, neuroscience tells us that the brain requires struggle in order to grow. So to make more neuron connections and to increase gray matter. These individuals demonstrate resilience in the midst of obstacles, but they do not allow those obstacles to stop their progress. There may be falls along the way, but they continue to get up. Doubt and trauma may even slow down or minimize that progress, but we acknowledge and celebrate every little success that they've had and every step they've made towards their goals. Our members have had success, not only with this cohort, but over the four cohorts that we've had, we've had members successfully complete other certification programs, including the SOLA training program, the ICC Work Equity Initiative, and the School District CDL training program. Before completing the program, our members on average interview with three employers, oftentimes securing employment at higher wages than when they entered the program. We've had two members use their education award after earning, um, after completing their 900 hours. And those individuals are first time college bound in their families. We've had a member start a lawn care business with his family. And we have a member who is currently preparing to sit for the police academy exam for a second time. That's resilience. But not just resilience, it's confidence. We rebuild our members' confidence through self-efficacy, acknowledging the completed goals and successes they've had in the past and knowing they have the ability and the will to succeed. Self-efficacy is also acknowledging the failures and setbacks, but believing that they can overcome. Upon exiting, members have self-assessed that communication and teamwork are skills they have improved upon during the six months. Peoria Corps is an incubation space. We provide a safe, encouraging, and an accountable space to rebuild and invest in our region's workforce. And while we support them, they also give back to us, to our community. Since October 2017, our members have completed over 13,601 hours of service a monetary value of over $345,873.43. So that's a major uh, accomplishment that our members have made to our community. Peoria Corps members have also planted over 85 trees and invested over 100 hours in tree maintenance. Peoria Corps has removed litter and debris from our streets, totaling up to 252 acres of land, which is equivalent to about 144 um, football fields. Our members are making a difference and they are getting the job done. As I shared, this week is AmeriCorps week and we are celebrating the great work of Peoria Corps and of our Peoria Corps members, their contribution to this great city of Peoria. So thank you all so much for coming out and celebrating. We'll have some words from our crew supervisor, uh, Darren Graves, and our case manager, Amelia Hufeld. And guys, thank you. Thank you. 
stand on this item. Okay, so um, first of all, thank you guys for being here. I think our turnout has been a little mixed just because of things that are going on, which is, you know, just kind of an unfortunate thing. But we're so glad that um, the people that were able to attend are here today to recognize um, our graduates. We've had um, a lot of people, a lot of successful people put in a lot of work um, in this program. And so that's what we're here to celebrate today with those people. So um, that being said, I'm really lucky because I get to work with our members on a different level, so to speak. I get to work with them personally, um, help them kind of figure out the barriers that they're facing. Um, that's the key to our program is that we're uh, attempting to help people who face multiple barriers be successful in finding not just employment, but sustainable employment, employment that allows them to um, support their family. Um, and allows them a, uh, a reasonable standard of living. So that's ultimately our goal. And um, the people that we work with, they come in um, in all different areas of that journey. Um, and so they're all different, and so we get a lot of refreshing personalities here. I get a lot of different perspectives, and that's really nice. And especially with the group we had, um, you know, this go-around, we had varying ages, varying experiences. Um, and it's good to see those dynamics uh, and to see the way they work together to kind of understand um, some of the difficulties that they face. And so, first of all, I just want to tell you guys like I always do. You know, it's all about just making progress and moving forward, uh, taking that next step. Um, you know, I know that um, you guys have put in a lot of work to be here um, and to keep on keeping on despite some, you know, extenuated circumstances. Um, everybody's path looks different. Uh, it doesn't have to look like what you think it was going to look like when you started. Um, it doesn't have to look like everybody else thinks it should look like. Everybody's path is different. That's okay. As long as you're staying on your path, um, you know, just keep on going. Sometimes you got to turn around and start over. Sometimes you run into a roadblock. Um, but just don't ever give up. Keep on going. That's what the difference is. Um, the difference is that, that desire to keep on going and to pick yourself up. You know, everybody runs into those roadblocks. Um, on my, my signature, on my email, it says, uh, the road to success is always under construction. Mm -hmm. And it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we learn more about ourselves along the way. And as that saying goes, as we know better, we do better. And so I like to think that all of you that are here um, have put a lot of time and effort into yourselves, into learning more about yourselves and about learning what you want um, and about, you know, what you need for long-term success and what you can do in the short term to ensure, um, you know, that you're working towards your goals. So that, and thank you for being here to talk to me every day because uh, I enjoy that. Um, and make sure that when you be here, um, you keep in touch. Okay, It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. What to say, what to say. Well, I can, I can say that uh, you guys, just like every group we've always had, there's always a different uh, personality, different work ethic, different uh, energy brought to your group. You all have done a great uh, deed to the land for, for the city. Uh, for those of you who may not know, this group here planted the most trees out of all the cohorts so far. Mm -hmm. This past uh, was back October, planted about 50 trees a month. So that's pretty good for shovels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we put a, quite a few trees on, on the uh, south side uh, near the old McKinley School. Forgive me for not remembering the street, I just remember the building. Uh, but uh, we've been all over the city picking up litter. Uh, Star Street is much cleaner now, about a couple of uh, the last month or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but you guys have, I think, uh, gotten a wide variety of uh, work, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we learned how to harvest seeds out of MacArthur. You guys know what a seed is, and you know how to start your own plants, so your own flowers. Feel free to scatter it, because keep pure and beautiful, <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, you know, all the trees we planted, all the uh, work we've done throughout the year, and what it's like to be a landscaper in the wintertime. <laughs> it takes a lot of patience. <laughs> a lot of patience. So, you know, you, you guys, you, you, you've gained a lot of skills throughout this way. Uh, I think you definitely have uh, built up a lot of patience of how to work with others and work in different situations. 
Um, one of the beauties about landscaping is you learn how to work with people, mm -hmm. you learn how to work by yourself and still manage to get things done. You see what needs to be done, you know how to tackle it, you know how to uh, work with others and delegate work. Uh, and the best thing about it is, uh, my opinion is, uh, you see what needs to be done and you go back. Same thing with your life. You know what needs to get done, you know what you need to do, you know how to plan for it, work towards it, get things done. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you know, uh, you guys, you know where to find me. Look for the hat. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome to come back down this way to help me uh, keep the city beautiful and uh, be, you know, uh, spread the knowledge, spread the wealth to everyone else you meet. And uh, even if you aren't in the general area, take what you've learned here and spread it out. Spread that seed, sow that seed everywhere you go. Congrats! And uh, enjoy this moment. Enjoy the day, enjoy the weekend, enjoy the sun, sunshine that I came out. Mm -hmm. Once the wind dies down and all that stuff. <laughs> anyway, sorry, no, no, I'm trying to rant. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. So we're going to have our keynote speaker, um, and it's Mr. Chris McCall. So we're very excited to have him share words for our graduates today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, friends and family members. My name is Chris McCall. I'm an attorney in town. I've been practicing law since uh, 2003. You may have seen like some of the signs and whatnot. I'm running for state's attorney here in Peoria. I'm gonna give you a little bit about my background. I was born and raised in Peoria. I attended Richwoods High School. I then attended ICC, and then I attended the University of Illinois for undergraduate education and the, under, and the University of Illinois College of Law for Law School. I uh, met my wife in high school. Her name is Tiffany. We have two kids, and one is a 19-year-old, another is a 12-year-old. But uh, that's my story. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about me. I want to tell you all. Um, couple points I want you to remember. I want to talk to you all about achieving by being bigger than your fears. If your fears are bigger than you, then you'll end up settling for the things that are less than your possibilities and smaller than your opportunities. Whenever that happens, we become enslaved by our fears, no matter what situation we're in or what decision we need to make. So how do you achieve? How do you overcome your fears? I want to give you the basic formula. Look at the facts, get out of your own head, look at things logically, and take action already. I want to tell you all a story. This is a story you all heard growing up, okay? But I'm going to put a different spin on it, okay? When I start this story, you all are going to understand it. This was in the 10th century BC. <clears throat> a man named Saul was king, and he ruled over Israel. The Israelites were at war, so you already know where I'm going with this with a nation of people called the Philistines. Philistines had many giants living in their land, but the biggest one was named Goliath. Goliath was nine feet tall. He was taller than anyone in the room, and including taller than me at five foot eight, right? <laughs> Goliath was outfitted from head to toe with what I call problem-solving clothing. In other words, if you came around trying to start a problem, he was dressed for success. Right? He had a brass helmet, brass body order, armor, excuse me, and had a huge curved sword. He also had a brass spear and a huge shield. And he had a body man with him. He was so big, he had so much clout, he had a guy who actually carried his shield for him. His shield alone weighed 91 pounds. Graduates, Goliath had every opportunity. He had every advantage. He had all the toys. He had all the bling. Y'all listen to rap music? A little bit? Okay. He was dripping like the baby. He had more brass than Kodak Black. 
He had a swagger like LeBron. You all watch basketball? All right. He had more brass, more gold than two chains. He had chains on top of chains on top of chains. Brass on top of brass on top of brass. Okay? He was the true Debo before the Friday movie. So he had every advantage in the world. Okay? So the thing about giants is sometimes you battle giants in your life who have more advantages than you. Their advantages and privileges may taunt you. Your advantages may not, in your eyes, seem as important. Your disadvantages and lack of privilege might seem to haunt you. The, gi the giants may flaunt more, may flaunt their advantages more. They may try to intimidate you. They likely will try to flex your strength in hopes you will be intimidated. They may even surround themselves with yes men who will reassure their egos and remind them and other people that they are strong or should always win. The giants you face may take on other forms. The giants may be financial worries, a lack of employment history, poor credit scores. Sometimes the giants are health related. You may be battling mental illness. You may be battling a history of drug abuse, history of alcohol addiction or abuse. It may be a criminal record that is a giant you're battling. It could even be autism. Or perhaps you have suffered some sort of debilitating abuse. When we focus exclusively on our problems, we are not preparing to defeat our giants. We cannot continue to allow the reality that the giants are there in the valley to discourage us. We have to learn to manage our fears. We have to proceed with taking what I call action items. These action items are steps you are taking now. As graduates of Peoria Corps, you receive support, education, job training to improve the city's green infrastructure. You learn about various trade unions and how to join and how to keep our city more beautiful, more safe. You've learned networking. You have begun to tackle whatever giants, if any, you may be facing by being bigger than your fears. David's older brothers fought in the army. They were all stronger than David. They were all there when, Goliath, when Goliaths attacked Israel, and they were all afraid. Graduates, family members, sometimes when you battle your Goliath, you have to be prepared to stand alone. People will make all the promises in the world to help you. Sometimes they'll promise to mentor you. And sometimes when you need them the most, they may disappear. Be prepared for that. Sometimes you have to stand alone. You have to have a plan that if one day you will have to do it alone, you're ready. Some fair weather people are willing to help when it's easy for them or it's convenient or when they have nothing else to do. But when it gets tough, Sometimes you have to be prepared and have the confidence to stand by yourself to achieve your dreams, and I'm encouraging you to do that. When the time comes, based upon this education you received, you all will be prepared, excuse me, you all will be prepared to stand alone. One thing about giants is that they are usually loud. Every morning and every evening for 40 days, Goliath shouted to the Israelites in his big, deep voice every day. His challenge went, went unanswered. The cowards thought about saving themselves instead of fighting the Goliath. You have to take risks in order to be successful, but they need to be calculated risks. When someone discourages you, tells you not to apply for a job because you wouldn't be interested in, any, in the job anyway, sometimes they may be telling you that because they have a family member, they'd rather have the job, they'd rather give the job to you. Apply for that job. Learn about the company. Learn about where you're looking to work, and if you qualify for the job, take the risk. Sometimes folks will discourage you just because they may not be able to do it by themselves. You do it, you achieve. When Goliath was talking and screaming, David volunteered for the fight. He gathered all the facts. David was small, but he was agile. He refused to wear the bronze armor offered to him by King Saul because it would weigh him down and force him to fight in a conventional method. That is what Goliath wanted, a conventional fight. However, David was able to get out of his own head. He conquered his own fears. He dealt with his own doubts, and then he set out to fight the battle on his own terms, using the same tactics that helped him snatch sheep from the mouths of lions and bears. 
fellas, you can't follow everyone's playbook. People are always willing to give you advice, but strive to play to your strengths. Your strengths may be different than other people's strengths. Always remember your strengths. Advice is good, and two heads are usually better than one, but make sure that your strategy that you employ is one that is based on your strengths. Know what works for you. Always look at things logically. Think about ways to diminish the giant's advantages. Can you use their arrogance to your advantage? Exceeding the low expectations people may have of you will make you look even more of a success. Think about ways to diminish the, the advantages, like I said. Make use of your gifts. Make use of your talents. Assess your strengths and weaknesses. Look at what you have. Don't look at what you don't have. Consider what you need and formulate a plan to be successful. Think about who is in your corner. Do you have a loyal bestie that when things get tough, you can call your bestie? Do you have a girlfriend, a wife, someone you can rely on? Your mother, your aunt, your father? Who can give you the advice you need when things get tough, you can lean on them? Think about your gifts. Think about your education. You have an education now. Use your education to achieve your dreams. You are creative. You know how to work with your hands. Your God-given gifts are important, and you receive training from men. For example, you all have gifts I don't have. I don't have the patience to measure three times and cut once. I'm not good at singing. I'm not good at using saws. I'm not good at using hammers. You all receive those sort of trainings. My gift was the ability to speak in public, connect with people, and do well in pressure situations. So I focus on what I'm good at. I'm going to encourage you all to focus on what you're good at. Keep in mind, not everyone has the same gifts. You're not going to get every gifts. I can't sing. I can't dance. Focus on your gifts and be good at what you're good at. David, had, David took action using his heart, courage, and strategy. He had a plan based on what he did well, and he worked his plan to perfection. You can apply the same principle and same level of thinking to your life and challenges you're facing. Think bigger than your challenge, be bigger than the obstacle, and act as if it's impossible for you to fail. Have self-confidence, conviction, believe in yourself more than you believe in the challenge is too big to handle. Understand that when you take action and begin to overcome the challenges in life, there will be critics who talk about you. David's brothers rebuked him for leaving the sheep and calling him arrogant. David took action anyway. Goliath then walked up to David and saw his youth and immediately disliked David. David took action anyway. Goliath then became even more upset and taunted David because David stood up for himself. Every giant has a weakness which can be exploited to overcome. This giant was old, slow, and apparently had bad vision. How do we know that? Why? He saw multiple sticks when David had one stick and five rocks and a slingshot. He hated David when he saw this young, handsome guy because he was jealous of this young, handsome, agile guy. Remember, Goliath was the same guy who was so slow, he told David to come to him. And when David wouldn't come to him, he came to David. This is a guy that was so old, so slow, he had an entourage, he had a person that was holding his shield. That was a weakness, he couldn't even hold his own shield. Just because someone is acting like they're bigger than you, that they're better than you, and they're stronger than you, that doesn't mean they actually are. Use your strengths to your advantages. Look at the facts, get out of your own head, think logically, form your plan. Be a giant killer as you go through life. You each possess some trait or characteristic that make you the perfect person to confront daunting tasks. We recently had another David and Goliath scenario. Did you all see the fight a couple weeks ago, the boxing match? Tyson Fury, right? Who, who, do, you, who do you fight? Wilder. How did Wilder walk out? He, but how did he walk out of the dressing room? He walked out of the dressing room wearing about 30 pounds of an outfit. 
celebrating Black History Month. He had a mask, he had all this clothing, and by the time he got to the ring, making that long walk, he was winded, right? Remember after he got knocked out, he complained that he was having trouble breathing. He complained that his legs were weak. That's because he was doing what Goliath was doing. He was showboating. And what did the guy that was six foot nine with a dad body, what did he do? He played to his game plan. He played to his strengths. And he knocked out the guy that looked like a superhero. The superhero got arrogant. The superhero had one amazing punch that knocked out every guy just about that he's ever faced. But Tyson Fury stuck to his plan. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a modern day David and Goliath story. So when you battle people, when you compete for these jobs, and they tell you, well, I got all this experience, I've been doing this for 20 years. Well, you guys got hunger. You guys have energy. You guys have education. Just because they have more experience than you, that doesn't mean that they're better than you. I started my law firm with a credit card, $200 in the bank, and now I've hired multiple attorneys, I've hired staff, and I'm running for state's attorney to protect you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you go through life, be a giant killer. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you so much for those inspiring words. Thank you so much. Um, we'll now have our members share our reflections uh, about their experience. Um, would anyone like to volunteer first? <laughs> okay. Um, well, we'll start down the line and go and go down um, from left to right. So, Quentin, you can start at the beginning. <laughs> Well, very good. Start where you're ready to start at. Uh, well, I learned about myself since working at Career Court. I really like working in small teams. I didn't think I didn't know that about myself. After graduating, I'm going to take all my experiences with me. If I could share words of encouragement to young people interested in doing this program, I'd say do it. This program isn't just about landscaping, it is about team building and helping your community. First of all, I just want to say that um, it's, been a, it's been a real good pleasure. The support staff that y'all gave me is great. Love. It. Thank you, Jamelia. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you, Ferris. And I would advise anybody about this program. This program is excellent. It, it really made me mature as a person. It made me mature as to different, how to get along with people, how to work with different people, how to work with young people and older people. And so I really got, it's, it's just been a fun ride for me, and best believe I will keep checking in. Um, it was pretty cool. I mean, I enjoyed it. That's, I like yeah, all the, um, I like Jamila, I like Darren, I like Amelia, I like, um, the, is it Dr. Dr. Muhammad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like him. It was pretty cool. I liked it. He did, um, a lot of outside work. I like outside work a lot because, you know, just, Make the time go by, you just get it done. And it was pretty cool, like you learning about plants and stuff. I used to do that with my grandma all the time. My grandpa, so you know, it was pretty cool. Uh, 
Okay, um, before being part of uh, Peoria Corps, I was in need of work and uh, needed time to get my mind together with my situation. Um, what I learned about myself since working for Peoria Corps, uh, that I'm an I'm a influence on people around me, mm -hmm. so I learned how to use that the right way. Um, after graduating Peoria Corps, um, I'll be working towards uh, owning my house that I'm living in and uh, thinking about opening up like a lawn care service, something like that, but getting into my own work. Uh, if I could share words of encouragement to young people interested in doing this program, I would say come with an idea of what you want to do and an open mind as well. Everything work out, it should work out. Uh, in closing, oh, that, that's, it said in closing, uh, if I had to have lunch with somebody dead or alive, I, I put down my dad. Uh, I like to beat him in a game of chess. <laughs> and that's it. I thank everybody. This is a great group to be part of. So before we hand out our certificates, I would like to ask Dr. Muhammad if you have any words to share. Sure, I'll be brief though. First and foremost, thank you all for coming. I'll give you a round of applause. I'd like to say big congratulations to you all for pursuing your dreams, uh, or pursuing like how to improve yourself and trying to get better credentials so you can be more successful to compete as Mr. Uh, Chris McCall has spoke about today. Equipping yourself with the right tools and resources to compete for those things that you want to acquire in life, such as being a homeowner, et cetera, I think that's very important. It's been a privilege for myself to really see and be able to recognize the dreams, personally and professionally, that they want to uh, accomplish. So I've had fun in this process. Each cohort is different, as uh, Darren spoke about earlier, and it's just a privilege to be really able to see them. For my background and research, I spent the greater part of graduate school studying on resilience, and educational resilience, how people face certain obstacles, to be able to overcome those obstacles, and being able to see that play out in reality with these cohorts. This cohort right here especially is just a phenomenal experience. So I just really appreciate being able to connect with you all and being instrumental and you all helping motivate me. So thank you. Very good. So we have um, a total of nine individuals that are graduating. Unfortunately, we have a number of folks that are battling various illnesses. Um, we have one young lady that probably very close to her uh, due date, um, but um, if for maternity, she's having a baby. Um, but we wanna acknowledge all of them, but first we wanna start off with the uh, folks right before us. So I want to um, hand out our certificates of completion. So our first certificate of completion goes to Quentin Bolin. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Quentin. All right, our second uh, certificate of completion is to Mr. Tyrese Jackson. A round of applause for Tyrese. Next, we have Mr. Tay Johnson. And finally, we have Mr. Damian Murray. So again, um, the other names of our members are on the program. I do want to share before closing um, that everyone has special gifts and special talents and have demonstrated the skills that they are learning and have applied, um, but I want to acknowledge one individual who has stood out um, above the rest. And we do have a very strong group, but this individual really uh, gave his full dedication to this program, not only in the classroom, but outside, a phenomenal leader, um, really helping lead in our service projects. And I want to acknowledge Mr. Tyrese Jackson. We want to say thank you, Tyrese. You have reset the bar of excellence in Peoria Corps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, as Dr. Muhammad said, we thank you all so much for coming out and acknowledging the contributions of these individuals. If you know of any young person, and, and really they don't have to be that young, 17, <laughs> 17 years old is the age we start, all the way up to however old you'd like to be. 
Um, as an AmeriCorps program, we uh, welcome all individuals, and we understand there are lots of different types of workers that are looking to get back and to improve their competitiveness in the, um, in the job market, and we really want to be able to support that. So if you know of any individual, we are in the process of recruiting now. Our next cohort will start um, May 26th, so it's the day after Memorial Day. <laughs> and again, there's six month um, intervals. I do also, I apologize, I do want to acknowledge that we did something different for um, this uh, cohort in that we brought on a mid-program members. And I want to acknowledge uh, Misael and we have another gentleman. Yes. Kamar. So we're trying something different, giving um, folks an opportunity to experience this in a smaller interval of time, three months. Um, being able to obtain the credential and learn and gain some information around green infrastructure, um, a more faster paced experience than the six months. So um, that option is also available for in individuals that are interested in doing a more accelerated version of, of Peoria Core. So with that, again, we'll give a round of applause to these wonderful gentlemen. Thank you. And we have cake right to the outside. Um, thank you again so much. Enjoy your afternoon.